introduce Louise Skoltz to you. Louise Skoltz is employed as manager in the Living Planet Unit at the World Wildlife Fund South Africa. Amongst her responsibilities at present, she is the WWF leader on a joint project with the National Association of Social Housing Organizations aimed at assembling empirical evidence to support the systemic greening of existing and new social housing stock. Prior to joining WWF South Africa in 2011, Louise practiced as an attorney until 2009. Louise also worked at the Sustainability Institute where she managed a so social cohesion intervention in support of a proposed mixed development in Philippi, Cape Town. Louise? Thank you, Vasila. It's lovely to be here today. As you note from my CV, I'm not a housing expert, so um, yeah. My input will focus primarily on the affordability uh, and availability of social housing. I would argue that it's not so much a question that there isn't social housing uh, uh, possibilities, it's just that the uh, demand so far exceeds um, the supply um, uh, that one must uh, ask yourself whether it, it's really making a meaningful contribution given the overall challenge that we're facing as far as accommodation is concerned in South Africa at the moment. I'm going to highlight some of the challenges and I'll, I'll end up with uh, some closing remarks. Um, maybe just to note, note at the outset, uh, it's not just in South Africa that rental or social accommodation or the availability of that is a problem. Worldwide there's been a movement to home ownership. Worldwide countries are struggling with funding of social housing uh, projects um, and uh, having difficulty not only managing, managing present demand but also planning meaningful for the future. Uh, what's happened in South Africa is that municipalities have sold off much of their uh, rental stock, not so much because of a focus on, on ownership, or perhaps that might have been partly that, but because they struggled to manage um, their rental house, housing uh, uh, adequately because of maintenance problems and, and uh, ensuring uh, rental collections. So one must... Uh, give social housing institutions a lot of credit for managing rental uh, in, in a situation that's very, uh, or an environment that's, that's very challenging. Now, why is rental accommodation so key? Um, although in the, past, uh, in the past there was much, uh, a large focus on home ownership, increasingly um, authorities, governments are realizing that rental housing affords the, the uh, potential for people to be flexible. And in South Africa, we people often operate at a very, uh, 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 are active in very elementary occupations. You need that flexibility. You need to be able to move where the jobs are. Um, and rental, uh, rental uh, housing actually affords you that, uh, that potential. Um, it also provides an alternative to people that don't want to buy or can't buy, who's not able to access a financing from a financial institution. It can also be more affordable if you look at fractional ownership or sharing of units, as is often the case with uh, social housing interventions where they've done uh, uh, inner city retrofitting of, of existing buildings. And then critically, and, and, and I think this is the key thing that comes out of the social housing policy, is that the creation of rental stock um, in terms of the, the Social Housing Act also affords an opportunity to reconstruct or, or reconfigure the existing uh, economic social and spatial structure of our cities, uh, which we've inherited from the apartheid regime. So it, it's also seen as an intervention to address those historic in, uh, inequalities. Um, rental stock, of course, can be private, it can be public, uh, and then you've got the social housing stock. But interestingly enough, although it's quite easy to ascertain what rental stock is held by social housing institutions, um, it's actually it's quite impossible to ascertain what municipalities and, and provinces and, and, and national government owns because it's all over in different departments. There's no accountability, there's nobody that takes ownership, which is very similar to what Mark had just said about um, state land. Similarly, with, with rental stock, is that they don't actually know what they have. So how do you plan if you don't know what you have at the moment? Um, just quickly about uh, uh, social housing. Social housing is a, is a creature of, of statute. 
Um, and it was created uh, as a government program to redress the old apartheid spatial inequities by provi providing low and moderate income households for people that are earning between 1,500 and 7,500 rand a month. It should be good quality, it should be dignified living, and it should be well located in South African cities. It's implemented by social housing institutions that are accredited or provisionally accredited. Um, and their business is then is to develop opportunities uh, then the business of social housing um, and also the long-term management of, of social housing. Um, they do that primarily through uh, accessing a subsidy from the, uh, sorry, uh, let me start at the beginning. The, the major of, 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 uh, funding for social housing institutions is a restructuring capital grant which is paid out to them by the uh, Social Housing Regulatory Authority. It's funding that throws direct, directly from Treasury. It's not part of the national housing budget. This then gets topped up by the institutional subsidy that gets paid out by province, and there's a balance that gets, uh, that a balance that's accessed from um, uh, private financing. So in 2012, just to give you an idea of the cost structure, the capital grant subsidy would have given you about 130,000. That would then be topped up by the normal institutional uh, subsidy, and then there'd be additional loan fi financing of, 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 30, of, of sorry, about 30%. 30%. And it's, it's this configuration that actually allows social housing institutions to be able to deliver housing to people at the entry level from 750 rand if you're falling between the band of 1,500 and 3,500 rand a month income. Alternatively, there's a, a cap of about 2,250 2, rand for the balance uh, for people earning from 3,500 to 7,500 rand. Um, if, as a social housing institution, you want to access this uh, uh, restructuring grant, 30% of your units in whatever development you, you want to, to um, build must go to the entry level, the, the primary target group, and that would be that entry level of 1,500 to 3,500 rand. Over and above that, you can then play around and see how you want to reconfigure your development. Now, uh, to date, from the, uh, the, the act was promulgated in 2007 until now, um, about 3 billion has been invested into social housing, and that is a combination of the 1,800 that was accessed through the restructuring grant and the institutional subsidy, and then the private investment, uh, one billion that's been leveraged with, with, the, um, with the private funding. It sounds reasonably impressive, but then you've got to weigh that up um, to the demand. And that is why I say, although social housing is a, is a, a, is a fabulous um, intervention in the sense that it does provide affordable, well-positioned uh, 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 housing, um, it is wholly inadequate as an instrument to address the, the demand that, that's ex existing in, in, in South Africa at the moment. Just some statistic, 20% of South Africans are on the rental market. 50% of those have an income of less than 3,500 a month. And a further 22,000 earn between 3,500 and 7,500. So this is the demand that's already out there, just to give you an idea of what, what the need is. Um, and, and when social housing institutions in, in, in urban areas roll out a new development, often the demand is, is it's, or it's oversubscribed by a factor of 10 to 1. I mean, there's just such a need for it. Um, in, Johannesburg, in Johannesburg in particular, and this, this data I got out of a Mail and Guardian article on the 11th of April, is that um, the percentage of, of people in inner city Johannesburg that earns less than 3,200 rand a month is in the region of 34,000 households. And 31% of these earn less than 1,600 rand and can spend 450, 450 rand a month on rent. And then there's a further 18 that earns between 1,600 and 3,200 and they can spend between 450 and 1,000 rand. So this is the demand that, that's out there. Um, and uh, so some or other one must now start thinking, you know, how are we going to address this enormous gap that sits, this is what there is, um, and, 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 and this is the, the need that, that's out there. Um, so 
Leaving that challenge aside, the other question that one must then ask is, is has social housing been effective in addressing um, access to cities and to address the historic, spatial and economic restructuring of, of, of cities? And in this regard, uh, the National Social Housing Association has actually done some research to say, if this is our mandate, we must actually have a look and see, have we actually addressed and have we, and, and have we been successful in, 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 in uh, doing the restructuring that was in, was an explicit um, um, ob objective of, of the Social Housing Act. Um, and, and what has happened to date, and, and this is what the research then shown, is that most of the uh, spending has been on, on ad hoc, um, uh, on an ad hoc basis, and that's mainly be been because of land availability. Local authorities are reluctant to release well-located uh, uh, land. Um, to, to social housing institutions because it's a long-term return on investment um, and, and, and they're not interested in that. And the second thing is, is also that they're not particularly involved and proactive in the planning of social housing. So you've got this mismatch, you're putting up social housing but it doesn't actually speak to... Must I finish? Oh, it doesn't actually speak to, to the, the, the uh, uh, strategies of, 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 of um, the municipalities. Um, and, and, and there's numerous excuses that they will, that they will, uh, um, uh, uh, that they will put forward. They will say that it's contrary to the provisions of the Municipal Finance Management Act or the Provincial Financial Management Act. Um, but I think the bottom line is that they prefer to sell their vacant land on private tender, or public tender, where they can get the most bang for their buck. Um, so unless we can address that challenge, it's always going to be a problem to, to look at social housing uh, uh, in the areas where ideally it should be to address uh, historical problems. And I just want to finish off with a concluding remark, um, ref uh, uh, quoting Marie Oshemeyer, um, who argues that, um, and, and this is in the larger context, that there's increasing pressure on cities to contribute to the national economy by creating the conditions to attract foreign direct investment competing for prominence on global or regional hubs. And I mean, as a result of this, um, uh, you know, the impact for governance on urban competitive, this governance for urban competitive, competitiveness is concerned with managing not only access to urban land, but also the mobility of people, expanding resources to attract and hold onto the class that will serve as global investment. And then despite current city strategies undertakings to absorb the poor and ensure African world-class cities for all, evidence suggests efforts, if not political strategies, not to attract or allow entry to the poor or those superfluous to the economy. So the focus is out there instead of addressing the challenges um, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and the needs of, of the poor uh, living in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. A very interesting input.